the chemistry of soap making. Making soap is actually one of the first chemical reactions humans ever did with intention. One of the first ones we ever wrote down was the process for making soap. And it hasn't changed much since ancient times. Back in the day, we just mixed fats and oils with wood ash, and then we boiled it for a little while and then soap would pop out. Nowadays, instead of the wood ash, we use lye and we boil it with the fats and oils for a while and then soap pops out. But what is soap actually made of? That bar next to your bathroom sink, what is actually in that? Soap is made of molecules that look like this. These molecules, what makes them special is that they have two very different parts to them. So on the one part of this molecule, you got this long group of just carbons and hydrogens and not much else. And it just so happens that the molecules that make up grease and fats and oils like butter and olive oil look like that. They are very similar to that, which means that that part of the molecule can mix with greases and oils when they're present. But you've also got this other part of the molecule. The other part of the molecule has oxygen atoms on it and sometimes other things there too. And those other atoms allow that part of the molecule to do this thing called hydrogen bonding which makes it so that it can dissolve in water way, way easier, but just that part of the molecule. So these soap molecules, also called surfactant molecules, are powerful because they have both of these parts in one molecule, which means that they can allow water and oil to mix. And the way this generally works is that long carbon and hydrogen part, it'll just kind of get stuck in grease or oil that's mixed in with something. And then once you introduce water, well, the water can't dissolve the grease and the oil bits, but that other part of the soap molecule, that other part that can hydrogen bond, it can dissolve in the water. So now when the water comes along, it picks it up and it carries it away. The dirt on your hands or your clothes, that is. So that is generally how soap works to clean things. But making soap might seem a little odd now because we make something that cleans grease and oils from grease and oils. How does that work? It works through the magic of chemistry. In order to make soap, you need a base, a strong base. And frequently you use sodium hydroxide or lye. And this is frequently used to make bar soaps. You can also use potassium hydroxide and that's often used to make liquid soaps. But here I'm just gonna talk about the sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, there's a couple things going on with this molecule, but the main thing that's important is the oxygen atom here. And that oxygen atom has this negative charge. And that negative charge means that it has extra electrons that it wants to put somewhere. And when it puts them there, it wants to attach itself. So when you take lye or sodium hydroxide and you dissolve it in some water for making soap, you've now got a whole bunch of this hydroxide stuff just floating around looking for somewhere to dump these extra electrons. This is where the fats and oils come in. Fats and oils are comprised of a number of different things, but they're mainly made of triglyceride esters and they look like this. Now this looks like a complicated molecule, but what you might notice is that there are three sections of this molecule that look a lot like our soap molecules and that's exactly where they come from. But how do we get this soap molecule off of this chain thing here? There's one spot on this molecule that's really good at taking on some extra electrons and it's this carbon atom here that's attached to two oxygens where it has a double bond to one of the oxygens and a single bond to the other one. That spot on the molecule called the carbonyl carbon for the advanced student is really good at taking that extra bit of electrons. But once it does this, it leads to a reaction with the triglyceride ester. And the ultimate result of the reaction is that the ester bit pops off and you're left with your soap molecule. And this happens two more times. And now you've got three soap molecules from your triglyceride ester and this other molecule that's left over and that's called glycerin. Commonly, this is referred to as saponification. The advanced student might recognize this as a base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. Base catalyzed ester hydrolysis. But what makes soap soap has a lot to do with the fact that different fats and oils have different triglyceride esters. And this is where the mastery of soap making comes in and that people like Miranda, who've been making soap for a long time, know which fats and oils to choose to give their final soap what properties they want to give it. And depending upon whether or not you're making cold process soap or hot process soap determines how long it takes for the process to be complete. So frequently with cold process soap, you simply let this reaction occur slowly over the course of a few weeks to a month. Hot process soap though, the whole idea is to add enough extra energy by heating the mixture that you complete the whole saponification reaction in much shorter time. And thus you have a finished soap product. One of the things that I've always found interesting that they have in soap recipes is sugar, like table sugar. 
People add sugar to their soap because it makes the lather better. It makes the bubbles stronger. It also helps the soap dissolve a little better, which means it can clean better, right? Because there's more soap there to do it. But how does that work? If you look at the sugar molecule, you might notice there's a lot of those OH groups just hanging out on that molecule, which means that sugar does a very good job of that hydrogen bonding thing we talked about earlier. And because of this, it changes the properties of the water when the soap is in it such that the soap is better at dissolving in the water because it can hydrogen bond better and the bubbles last longer and are stronger because the sugar is holding on to the water molecules more strongly so the bubbles don't evaporate as fast and they don't pop as easily and that's a big part of why people will add sugar which as i understand you can add in either process i think so yeah so one of the most ancient inventions of humanity. Very simple to make, very complicated to make well. I hope that this made sense, and until next time, it's Kim Thug.